Alright, now that you should have SDL completely installed and it should work properly, now we can actually jump into making a sort of framework to base all of our future projects on. So I've created a project named Video Test, and this is where I'm going to build up this framework. And uh, I'll have every from every tutorial, I'll have the source code available for download, so you can download it. And I'm hoping at the end of each video, I'll post a few little uh, challenges, I guess you could call them, just to see if you can, uh, if you understood the lesson. So to start off, when you make the project, you should have a a main.cpp file. So in our main.cpp file, the only thing we're really going to have is our main function. Okay. Now I already have a lot of code in here, as you see, but I'm going to go over that soon. So basically, I've created an application class. The application class is going to handle everything for us. It's going to be kind of a forefront to access anything. So instead of having our main function boggled up with a bunch of code, it's going to all be nicely organized in our application class. So just to run through the main function, right here I create an instance of the application, a global instance, but I say up here that's externed in application.h. So that means uh, if any file includes application.h, it'll have access to this pointer. So then I actually dynamically allocate it. I call the function init from it, then call the function run, then the function quit, then I deallocate it, and then I return zero to end the program. So going on with that, you should add a file to your project called application.h. So in this, the only in this class, the only piece of data we really need at the moment is a boolean to check to see if the user is done or if the program's running, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. I like to look at it as done. Um, so we have our standard constructor and destructor, and then here's all the functions that we called. But if you've noticed, there's three more. So the init, the init function should initialize the application and anything else needed, such as SDL. And that's, so that should be called before you do anything. The quit function, on the other hand, uninitializes everything and deallocates everything, so that should be called at the end. The run function is going to implement your loop. So every game or application should have a loop. So basically, we're going to say, while the user is not done, we're going to do the, these things. So the three things we're going to do is take input, update, and render. Now if you notice, take input has an argument, which is a pointer to an SDL event. So what an SDL event is, is just a structure that holds information about events, which can be a key press, a mouse click, mouse movement, any of that. So later we'll be going over all that, and I'll show you how to implement an easy way uh, to check for events. Um, so really, these three functions are just to split up the code that boggles up run. So now that you should have this application class set up, you should add another file to your project called application.cpp. So going from the top, the only thing we want to do in the constructor is initialize mb done to false. In the destructor, we don't want to do anything yet. So now here's where we're going to actually start getting into SDL. In our initialization function, we want to initialize SDL. We do that with a call to SDL init. SDL init takes a single parameter, and the parameter it takes is what you want to init. SDL has a number of subsystems, such as timing, video, and audio, that you can initialize one by one. Usually, just because you're starting out, you're going to want to use the flag SDL init everything, and this will init everything, obviously. So if you wanted to initialize certain subsystems, you'd first still have to call SDL init and init something, but then you could call SDL init subsystem and pass in the subsystem flag that you want. SDL init returns 0 on success and negative 1 on failure. 
So right here, I'm checking to make sure it equals zero. Basically checking to make sure it succeeded. If it did not succeed, I want it to return false. So back in our main.cpp file, when we initialize, we check to make sure that the initialization function returns true. And then we return negative one if it doesn't. So if it doesn't, our program will never really run. So that's kind of a preventative for crashes. So now, uh, if SDL and it did return zero, then it's just going to return true. And then we're going to move on. So now, the next function that's called in main.cpp is run. What run is or does implements the loop. So in each program you have, you're going to likely have a while loop. And the while loop is going to say, hey, while the user is not done, do this stuff. So really we'll want to later implement our take input, update, and render functions in here. But for the moment, we're just trying to build the application. We don't even have a window yet, but we will soon. So after the call to run, which we just, uh, we implement the loop, but really the loop isn't going to do anything because we say while mb done is not true, then set mb done to true. So really this loop is actually going to go through once, then when it comes back through, it is true, so it's going to break through. So in our last uh, function that we call in main.cpp, which is uh, quit from our application class, we are going to uninitialize SDL. Uninitializing SDL is simple, just a call to SDL quit. So now that we have that, we should be done and ready to run. So now we will run it. Nothing happened. It may seem strange, but that's what we expect. You should check down uh, in the logs of code blocks, and it should say process terminated with status zero. And it'll probably say zero minutes and zero seconds. If it doesn't say zero minutes and zero seconds, your computer is probably very, very, very slow. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Next, we want something to actually happen. So to do that, we first need a window. So to make a window in SDL, we have to use something called a surface. What a surface is is something that holds an image, really. It's really a buffer. So what our window is going to be is a class. We're going to make a class to encapsulate the actual surface. So basically, we'll use this surface to apply any images we have onto a screen. And we'll also have some more functions added to our initialization function. But first, we need to make a window class. So add a new... Uh, file to your project named window.h. So I'll do that right now. So now that I've done that, I'm going to pause the video and when I come back, I'll have this filled out.